Today we're reading the 2015 book, The Soul Fallacy, What Science Shows We Gain from Letting Go of Our Soul Beliefs by French-born American cognitive scientist Julian Mussolino, who teaches psychology at Rutgers University. I decided to write this book because um, I've been teaching uh, psychology, cognitive science for a number of years now. And I, I, I thought that there was one big uh, elephant in the room. Students were told uh, all the time about what we uh, call the material basis of mind. Uh, but very rarely, if ever, were they told what this entails for uh, popular conceptions of how we function mentally, uh, the concept of the soul. First, I tried to document what kind of soul uh, people, including students here at Rutgers, believe in. On page 52, he talks about how in 2012, he pulled his 200 plus student psychology class with the following scale. Do you believe you have a soul? Provide your answers by picking a value on the scale below. Resultantly, he found that 80% of students believed they probably to definitely have a soul. These beliefs are very widespread among uh, students and among the general population here in the U.S. He also found that 73% of students believe that the soul is an immaterial entity separate from the body and that it performs the following functions. It is a moral compass. It is the seat of consciousness. It is the thing behind feelings, free will, personality. It is the thing inside of us it gives us the ability to make decisions and the ability to fall in love. Um, so the book first shows that this is the case, that those beliefs are widespread today in the 21st century, uh, and then shows that these, uh, this idea of a soul is not just a theological or religious or metaphysical question, but is above all a scientific question. He also found that when students were asked the question, do you believe that the question of whether human beings have a soul is a question that can be answered using scientific means that only 26 percent of students agreed with the statement. I show uh, at the end of the book that we really have nothing to lose. We uh, have something important to gain. Um, so I, I end the book with a message of, of hope. Uh, it captures the fallacy that uh, the idea that we have a soul, which I think isn't true and I try to demonstrate in the book, in 2013, Mussolino repeated the experiment on 220 undergraduate students, finding that 88% were soul believers, and also that when created with a follow-up question about where they believed their soul came from, 73% said that God gave it to them. But also the idea that we uh, that is constantly repeated in our culture by different voices. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say that it really irritates me that South Park would say that red-haired people don't have souls, okay? That unless we believe in the soul, unless people believe in the soul, then uh, our lives would be devoid of meaning and purpose, which I think is a fallacy as well. To explain that humans do not have souls, we have four carbon-hydrogen-based animate things. Retinal, a three-element, light-powered, bending molecule, DTA, a carbon, hydrogen, sulfur, heat-powered walking molecule, AQ, a synthetic carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, heat-powered walking and carrying molecule, and human, a CHNOPS plus 20 element, heat and light-powered bending, walking, talking, carrying, dancing, and thinking element thing. It's perfectly uh, fine, in fact, perfectly normal for a lot of people to not have those beliefs and live perfectly happy, meaningful lives. The concept of the soul, however, is a mythological belief that goes back to Plato, who traveled as a youth to Egypt. And from the Egyptian five-part soul model of the human, carried or developed this model in Greece, according to which a human is a dualistic thing comprised of a body and a soul which produces emotion in the thing. The book um, should be read by uh, either people who believe in the soul 
it, it's sort of an all-encompassing book which um, tries to reach as large an audience as possible. So if you're on the fence and you're not sure whether people have souls or don't have souls, then the book contains all the elements, all the ideas that hopefully will help you decide one way or another. A body that moves of its own accord, however, is a violation of the first law of motion, which says that with no outside forces, an object will never move of its own accord, and that when in motion, the body will never stop unless acted on by outside forces. All of this was covered in Baron de Hobach's 1770, The System of Nature, Laws of the Moral and Physical World, otherwise known as the Atheist Bible, wherein he explains all of human morality and movement in terms of the three laws of motion. He says, thus, in consequence of man's reasoning upon false principles, the soul or moving principle within him as well as the concealed moving principle of nature have been made mere chimeras, mere beings of imagination. The System of Nature by Baron de Holbach. Um, I was, I'm very surprised how I've done so much Googling and research, and I even asked my philosophy professor uh, at college. He, he said he'd heard of Baron de Holbach, but he didn't know much about him. These have to be the best books ever written on atheism I've ever read, and I have read modern authors of Sam Harris, Richard Dawkins, um, Christopher Hitchens, um, I've read some of the works of Thomas Paine from the English, uh, excuse me, American Enlightenment, he was one of our founding fathers, um, and other philosophers through the 1800s, the 1900s, and modern day. Hence, the three element retinal molecule does not have a soul, but is caused or forced into a straightened configuration by the action of light acting on 11-12 carbon double bond. Likewise, the three element DTA molecule is put into motion by the action of heat and walks. Um, the System of Nature, Volume 1, he basically discusses the world around us, uh, like a few chapters I'll read in here. Moral and physical distinctions of man, the soul and the spiritual system, the soul does not derive itself from itself, it has no innate ideas. Uh, you know, he basically discusses that there is no soul. Accordingly, through the process of physical chemical evolution over time, larger CHO and PS elemental geometries have gained or acquired more properties, but these properties do not operate according to the action of self-motion or a soul in the pineal gland, but rather according to the three laws of motion. And finally, if you do not believe that we have uh, a soul, uh, then the book will uh, show you that your views are probably uh, on the right track and will give you all the elements, all the arguments to support uh, uh, these views. Um, but above all, I think whoever you are, I think that you ought to read the book because it is a positive book. It is a book that talks about science uh, very broadly and the, the virtues and power and beauty of science. And I think this is something that we should all embrace.